Grab me by the nuts tonight. Punch me in the face, all right. Anyway, speaking of uh, taking it wrong. <clears throat> now, I shouldn't be doing this clip because my throat's like all fucked up. I'm, in fact, I'm starting to lose my voice. I don't know what the hell's going on here. <clears throat> but I wanted to make this clip because I'm getting back into Halo. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'm tired of this bullshit. I'm getting back into Halo. I'm going to get an Xbox One, and I'm getting back into Halo. Now, I don't want them to fuck up the new Halo. Infinite, or whatever the hell it's called. I do not want them to fuck it up. So this clip is basically what I want to see. As a long-time person who loves Halo, I want to see these things happen. I know nobody's going to listen to this or anything like that, but I don't care. I'm going to make the clip just for my own personal sanity. <clears throat> now... I do not want to see them bring pro players in to do a fucking thing at all. Keep your pro players the fuck out of the game. They're the ones who ruined Halo 5. Hell, they're probably the ones who ruined Halo 4. Now, don't misunderstand me when I say that. There's a time and a place for them. Listen, I want Halo to be done right for everyone. But when you're going to bring in just these hardcore pro players to make the game, bullshit. Bullshit. We've seen it with Call of Duty. It sucks. We've seen it with all these other things. It sucks. We've seen it with Halo 5. It sucks. Every time they bring in the pro players, it sucks. Uh, 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 fucking uh, Destiny brought in a bunch of YouTubers. It sucked. Okay. Because here's the problem. 343 has yet, between Halo 4 and Halo 5, they have yet... To make a proper base Halo. They have not done it yet. They need to take Halo and get the base right first. Then you can bring in all your pro players and do whatever the fuck you want to do with them. They can have their whole they can have a whole section. They can have a whole freaking playlist. They can do whatever the fuck they want to do, but you've got to get the base core concepts right first. And 343 has yet to do that. Okay, and I'm talking mainly uh online here. Because Halo, at its core, it's a casual shooter. And I know the word casual is dirty. I know it's a dirty word, and I, I hate casuals too. Fuck them. But here's the problem. If they're not there, guess who's left? Nothing but a bunch of MLG assholes who make the game not fun. So people like me, who are kind of in the middle, I want, I want the Christmas noobs. I want the easy kills. I want people who... You know, just are playing normal. Not these people who are trying to exploit the thing and head glitch and all this other bullshit. Yes, they will be there. But you've got to make the game accessible to other people. You can't just sit... Because I'm going to let you in a little secret. This is the God's honest truth. You can love or hate what I'm saying, especially, oh, I love MLG. Fine. Fine. Here's a newsflash. Go to YouTube, type in Halo, look at Halo's playlist. Go five years back. Go ten years back. Whatever. You will notice one simple thing. Every video that is, an, that is an update to the actual game gets like 23,000 views, 33,000 views, 100,000 views in some cases. Look at all the MLG bullshit. It gets 3K. 3K view. 3,000 views. After five, six, seven years, nobody watches that shit. No one watches it. The only people who watch it are these idiots and kids. The only people who watch it. And I'm not going to disparage people who, who like the MLG bullshit and all the, the pro players. And I'm not going to disparage that shit. But it is not something that sells. It doesn't promote the game like they think it does. It does nothing but hurt the game. E-Nerd Sports is a cancer to gaming, and it has ruined, it's ruined Call of Duty, it's ruined Halo, and anything else it's touched. Now, the way to do it, now again, I want to come at this with legitimacy. I don't want to sit there and say, oh, you suck, and all this other stuff. No, I'm going to come at this with legitimacy, and I'm going to come at this with... How do we make the game good for everyone? I understand there's MLG Pro people who just want a certain thing. That's fine. The entire game should not be that, though. Should not. So, 
I want to come with like legitimate uh, things here, like actual, not just come out and say, "Oh, you, this game sucks." I want to actually have, hopefully, constructive criticism or constructive ideas or things that could actually make the game collectively better. And I'm telling you right now, 343 needs to make the base game accessible to casual players. And I mean people who work 9 to 5, who love Halo, but they have lives, they have wives, they have kids, they have jobs, they have school, they have whatever. Okay? Halo needs to be something that you can come on after work, after school, play and enjoy and have fun doing it that if you can capture that then everything else will fall into place the minute you start bringing in hardcore players and all this bullshit like for example you look at Halo you look at Halo 3 why does everyone hail Halo 3 as like the best one because well it was the best one because it did everything right it, it was casual, but it was also very deep. It had, you know, certain elements to it that a pro player could latch on to. But it wasn't so overpowered that a casual couldn't play it. Yeah, there were power weapons. And the hardcore are going to know, oh, the power weapon, the sword is right here, and we got to go get it. And the minute the match starts, we're all going to rush toward the sword. Or all toward the sniper, or whatever. You know, that was in there. But you know what? Even if they had the sniper, even if they had the sword, even if they had the rocket, you could still beat them. Now you fast forward to Halo 5? No. That whole game, if you didn't have a power weapon, you weren't killing anybody. If you had your base weapons, you weren't doing jack shit. The assault rifle, I'm telling you right now, and I said this in Halo 4 even, that fucking gun needs a buff. They needed to buff that gun excessively because if I'm running at somebody putting an entire clip into them with the assault rifle and they're just going pew 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 with the stupid DMR that shit's not balanced there were multiple times I ran up to somebody shot the entire clip into them and I understand there's a difference between how far away I was but the closer I got I would run up to them empty the entire clip into them and then punch them and they would go pew pew and I'd be dead and they'd run off that's bullshit that is just straight bullshit and I'm telling you right now you need to get the base right first fuck the MLG bullshit you put that to the side because here's what's going to happen once you get the base done then you can build your MLG bullshit. You could have a playlist. You could have a whole section. You could have a whole section for MLG. You could have a whole section for pro player bullshit. Inner sport. You could have a whole section of that. But keep a casual. Keep the the base of the game casual. Okay. It, it, I'm sorry. Now I don't mind a sweat fest once in a while, but every single match, I don't think so. You know, like, like Vandahar with his fucking uh, uh, skill-based matchmaking that he says it isn't in the game, but we all know it is. Bullshit. Bullshit. I don't want to play with people who are equal to my level. I don't want to sweat fest every single solitary time. Yeah, I want Christmas noobs. Yeah, I want to see some idiot who doesn't know what he's doing and pluck him off. Okay? Makes me feel like a man. It makes me feel good. Getting raped in the ass by a fucking asshole with a sniper sitting in the back like a little bitch does not make me feel like a man. Your goal is to make me feel like a man. I am playing Master Chief. I'm supposed to feel like a fucking man. Not like a little bitch. Okay? That's a simple fact. That's a simple fact. And again, you can have all of your MLG bullshit. You can put all of that in there. If the base game is correct. And I'm sorry they did not get the base game right in Halo 5. They, they came. I think they came very close in Halo 4. Except the weapons were not balanced. First off, the maps were not conducive to hardly any of the weapons except for the DMR. If you weren't playing with the DMR, you weren't playing. That's a problem. That's a simple problem. 
you know, I like the assault rifle. You know, the, the, the classic Halo gun. And if I'm trying to use that, there's no way I can, there's no way I can make the ground on somebody who's using that, who's like three tapping somebody in the head, or two tapping, or whatever it was at the time. There's no way. Now I understand that's the point of the gun. I get it. But when you're handicapping the entire game so that everybody's using just that one gun, that that's just bad design. That is simply, simply bad design, okay? And the way the the maps were conducive to that play style, it didn't help either. Now you take a smaller map. You know, even even the smaller maps were questionable. You could still two tap or whatever three tap, whatever it was to the head with the DMR. Same thing. It's been a while since I played, so forgive me for not knowing if it was two or three, whatever. You know what it is. <clears throat> Again, the problem that I am going to continuously have is I do not want to treat Halo is if it's a fucking job. I don't want to have to learn the details, okay? This, I don't want to have to learn all the little intricate details. Okay, this isn't the King of Kong. I don't need to know when the little jump, wait, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. I want to run, gun, shoot, throw grenade. That's it. That's it. And if I can't have fun doing that, then you have failed as a developer. You have failed as the caretakers of Halo. I can pull up Halo 3 and do the same thing. And again, what made Halo 3 so good is you could do that, but you could also learn the game. You could play it casually, but you could learn it. And the more you learned it, the more you learned how things worked, the better you were. Halo 5, if you didn't if you didn't do what you had to do, you weren't doing it. And that just isn't fun. Sometimes I just want to mindlessly go in there and just shoot people. Now I sit there and say, oh my god, oh my god, is he is he coming around a corner? Do I have the right weapon? Do I have the did it did it is this grenade gonna do it? I don't want to have to ponder all of that shit. I don't I'm sorry, there are times when I just want to mindlessly play. And if you can capture that mindless, just, whatever you want to call it. It's like Tetris. Tetris was, was a legitimate, if you really got into Tetris, it was a spiritual thing. Like, you were going on a subconscious level. When I hit 99, 9999, whatever the fuck it was, I almost doubled it. I, I made it well into 800 after hitting the 999. Like, I almost doubled it. I don't even know what it was because I was doing so good. This is like one of the one of the few times that I had an MLG moment. <clears throat> I had this was on the 3DS. I was playing it so like mindlessly, and, and mindlessly is not the right word because it was like it really was a spiritual thing because it was like I'm doing things and I'm not even aware that I'm doing them. It's like I'm turning these pieces because you have because. When you get that high, the pieces are just appearing. They're not even dropping. It's like, and they're there. And you have to, like, spin them and, like, put them in a spin. And you can't even think. And you're just doing. That's what, I, that's what we need for that kind of game. Where you can just go in there, mindlessly play. Or sit there and, you know, strategize. It needs to be open-ended where you can do both. And that's where the MLG comes in. I want the MLG people... I don't like the MLG people in that sense because I think that shit's nothing but cancer. And it's been proven. You can hate what I say, but it's been proven. It's it's a cancer to gaming. e -nerd Sports is a cancer to gaming. You can, you can scoff at that all you want, but it's true. But I want them to have fun. I want them to have the kind of game they want too. Even though I may never ever play it. But again, as long as you get the base concept down... And I'm telling you right now, 343 has not done it. They have not done it yet. Now, that being said, what do I want to see for this new Infinite? Now, I don't know what kind of game they're making. It's all speculation at this point. Um, 
<clears throat> if I had my way, I'd have them make a Destiny game, to be honest with you. Now, with that comes some problems that can be easily avoided if they know what the fuck they're doing. For example, and this is, I would say, the same thing with a Metroid game. You have your base campaign, and yes, you need a damn campaign. Fuck you, Call of Duty. Eat a dick. You need a campaign. You know what you do in that campaign? In this case, you have it be Master Chief. Just Master Chief. Fuck Locke. You can maybe do one or two levels of lock, maybe one or two levels as an arbiter or some bullshit. But 99% of the game has to be the chief. Make it the fucking chief. If it ain't the chief, it ain't Halo. I don't care. Fuck it. I am picking up Halo for chief. I'm not picking up for lock. I'm not picking up for the arbiter. I'm not picking up for this one or that one. Give me master fucking chief. It's like, oh, it's a Mario Brothers game. Except, oh, Mario's not in it. Oh, okay, sure. Okay. Give me a break. So, do the main campaign. Play as Master Chief. Then when you do the online, make it create a character. Think, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Who did it right? Maybe Red Dead Redemption? Okay. You play as Arthur. And then you get to create a character. Haha. Uh -huh. Novel idea. I mean, seriously, just novel idea. I'd like to see it be a little more open-ended. And yes, I'd like to see them do a Destiny-style game. Because what's really fucking weird to me is I honestly think 343 could do a better Destiny, and I think Bungie could do a better Halo. I'd almost like to see the two of them kind of working together again. Maybe 343 could help Destiny. Maybe Bungie could help Halo. Maybe they could work together. I don't know. <laughs> just throwing it out there, you know? Whatever. But I'd like to see an open world. I'd like to see, uh, you know, a decent story that actually makes some fucking sense for once. I'd like a story that's actually complete. Where I don't have to read a story or a comic book before I start the video game and all of a sudden it starts in the middle of something that's completely 180 from where the last one left off. Again... Cortana basically died at the end of 4, and then beginning of 5, oh, she's the villain, uh, we don't know how, just should have read the comic books, oh, you could have put a disclaimer in there, shut the fuck up, that's on you, you fucked up, not me, not me, I didn't know I had to read, a f I didn't know this was required reading, that I had to go and, and, and read some secondary novel, just to get, just to glean what the fuck is going on in the game. <clears throat> the story needs to be standalone. Yeah, you can do stuff outside the story. Fine, I don't have a problem with that. In fact, I actually enjoy that kind of stuff. But if the story doesn't make sense from where 5 left off, although 5, you can shove that up your ass as far as I'm concerned, but personally, if it doesn't make sense from what's already there, then you gotta make it make sense from what's already there. You can't just be random like, oh, okay. you know, like Cortana, you know, she, you know, the events of Halo 5 never happened, or some stupid shit. You can't do that. You can't do that. There's gotta be some semblance of normalcy. Especially in that kind of a world, it's like, whatever. <clears throat> Other than that, I really don't know what else to do. Again, I'd like to see a Halo or a Destiny style game. I'd like to see more RPG elements into the game. Level up. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think. Well, let me rephrase that. People really liked how Halo 5 handled the armor. I don't know if I liked how it handled the armor, only because I didn't think the armor was that great. I liked that you can customize each piece, but I didn't think it looked all that good. It wasn't unique. It didn't stand out. It didn't... I'm trying to be constructive here. That's like in Destiny. You don't really notice, oh, the boots. Oh, my God, they've got the boots. Oh, my God. 
You notice the helmet, maybe the chest, maybe the arms if you're lucky. The rest, not so much. So other than really the helmets, and I'll be honest, I didn't really find the helmets all that exciting. Now in Halo 3, I forgot what it was, but there was that ninja helmet. That thing was cool. And it stood out. So you, we kind of need armor that stands out. <clears throat> That's not just, oh, well, it's kind of a different shade. Oh, this is kind of a bluish green, and that's kind of a darkish green. No. <clears throat> or, oh, this looks like Master Chief's, you know, third set of armor in the, the you know, Mylar 4, or 5, 6. No. It needs to be very, you, you need to be able to recognize it. 90% of the armor, I couldn't tell you what the name of it was. Like, if you showed me a clip, I'd be like, 90% of it looks exactly the same. Maybe a tweak here and a little, you know, like one's got a little, the little face plate in the front's got a little, little side thing. The other one's going up and down. It, there's not much different. There really wasn't a lot of different there. And like I said, most of the armor to me did not stand out. Now I do like the idea that the under, the undersuit is black again, so everything else pops. That is definitely a, a, a plus. Now I'll be honest with you, I don't give a flying fuck about split screen. I. I'm curious how many people actually care about split screen versus, oh, it's just something to bitch about. I don't know. It's 2018. You don't need to be sitting on your your buddy's lap. I, whatever. But, you know, if the people who want it, whatever. I personally don't understand it, but whatever. <clears throat> but, hey, you know what people want? It? I, I, if they can put it in, it's not a problem. Do it. <sighs> But, uh, yeah, having different armor, having a reason to get different armor, having armor drops, like, you know, even weapon drops. Now, I'll be honest with you, Halo's weapons are kind of weak as far as, like, just the sheer amount of them. As in, like, there are certain specific guns, but there's not a huge variety I mean, there is, but there's not, like, unique variety, if you get what I mean. Like, like Destiny, you've got a lot of weapons. Some of them are reskinned, but whatever. Call of Duty, you've got a lot of weapons. Where in Halo, yeah, there's a good number of weapons, but... Uh, there's not the same type of variety. So I don't know how that would work, unless it's based upon, you know, levels, like, light levels, like, Destiny is like, okay, I got a, uh... A needler that's a level two, and I can get a, you know, play again. I get a needler that's level ten. It does more damage. That maybe could work. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Um, but one thing I would absolutely do is take that wreck system and shove it so far up your fucking ass that it never sees the light of day. Holy Christ! No, no. You want to do a wreck system for like the vehicles? Okay. I don't like it with the weapons. Now, I don't... I kind of gave up on Halo 5, so I don't know how it played out, but I know that the original pistol from Halo 1 was in there. But I don't know if it was like an actual item that you could get and just use all the time, or if it was something that you could... like a burnable card that you had to keep renewing to get to use... I'm not sure how that worked, because like I said, I kind of gave up on it. But, just, I'm telling you right now, if it was something that was... Something that you had to constantly reacquire, I don't like that. I didn't like that at all, I want nothing to do with that. Again, it works for the vehicles, you could do something like that, okay, so... Because you don't want people running around with tanks every 15 seconds, so yeah. The wreck system could work there... I don't know about buying it. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's don't get me started with the microtransaction because I understand you need to have microtransactions. You want to have microtransactions. You want to make the money. I get it. You need to make the money. I get it. I don't know how you could do it so that it works to the point where I don't feel like you're taking advantage of me and treating me like shit. I don't know how to do that. Um. <laughs> Like, Destiny's another good example. 
there are certain things I would buy. Like if I could go into my collections page and go into season one and oh there's a exotic ghost that you didn't have if i could hover over that and it says buy now for 99 cents i would now if it says buy now for 4.99 you go fuck yourself oh there's an emote that 15 dollar emote you can kiss my balls until the end of days bullshit no emote for 15 dollars that's bullshit or 10 dollars whatever the hell it was you try putting that shit at least seriously here's the thing when it comes to microtransactions I will give you more money less often. Okay? In other words, you come up with 100 emotes, I will probably buy most of them. Not all at once, but over eight month period, I'll give you over 100 bucks. The more you bring out, the more I'll be willing to possibly purchase. You bring out three and they're like 20 bucks each, you can go to hell. That simple. I'm not going to give you 20 bucks for a stupid emote. I'll give you $3. I'll buy maybe five or six of them. Next month, I'll buy another five or six of them. You know? I will give you more money less often. And do it willingly. It's that simple. Because I'm telling you right now, when I see like all these games on, on, on mobile, and I see the pricing structure, and the last one is... You know, buy whatever our currency is for $99. When I see that, I think that whoever designed that is completely fucking stupid. I think they're complete imbeciles and they will not get a dime from me. Because they clearly do not respect me as a, as a player. They don't respect me as a consumer. Because if I'm paying $99 and I'm not getting every single solitary thing the game has to offer, fuck you. That's 100 bucks, asshole. That's 100 fucking dollars. And usually, especially in the console version, I've already paid 60 plus dollars, depending on the tax. Now you want me to drop another 100 bucks so I can get all these little bullshits? No. Bullshit. Bullshit. And yes, loot boxes are gambling. Fuck you. Because if I'm giving you real money for a chance to get something, that's called gambling. That's fucking called gambling. You idiots. I thought gambling. I thought no. no, it's gambling, motherfucker. Stop being stupid. It's gambling. Now, if you say, oh, you want this armor, 99 cents. You want this warthog, $1.99. You keep shit low, I'll give you a lot of money. I will, I'll give you a lot of money. But I want a one-time purchase. I don't want... Well, if you want to use a Warthog 52 times in Warzone, well, you got to buy 52 Warthog packages. No, bullshit. Bullshit. You sell the Warthog for two ninety nine, and I can unlock it and use it unlimited. Now, there might be a timer on it where I can use it maybe once a match or once every five matches or something to that effect. I would be on, I would be on board with that. I would unlock the freaking thing. I'd give you $3 to unlock that. You know? A jetpack. You know? 99 cents. Jetpack. 99 cents for a helmet. That looks really cool. Maybe an exotic helmet, like Destiny would have. Or an exotic version of, uh, you know, the assault rifle. I'd give, you, I'd give you a couple bucks for that. I ain't giving you 20 bucks for it. I'm not giving you $10 for it. I'm not giving you, you know, all that shit. But yeah, you want to sell it for a reasonable price? Sure. So, that's the same thing goes with Destiny, too. I'm not going to give you $100. $100 for a bunch of stupid silver and bright dust bullshit I just no but you know I don't know but seriously if they did Halo very much like Destiny and you had strikes and you had all this other now one thing I'm really getting the shits over in fucking Destiny is the fact that they've alienated 99% of their fucking player base yet they still pretend that the game is a social experiment it's a social game and it's like oh you're gonna play with five people can't get the malfeasance unless you got a freaking clan to play with can't play with the, you can't get the malfeasance unless you get six people to play with and we will refuse to give you matchmaking fuck you okay you're gonna alienate the fucking fan base that's not on me i shouldn't have to go to a, a secondary website mlg or flg or f a jbl or whatever it is LGBTP, whatever, LFG, whatever the fuck it is, to find other people, strangers to play with. No, I'm sorry. 
I don't want to see raid exclusive exotics. That's bullshit. You want to put a raid exclusive sniper? I don't give a fuck about snipers. Do that. Don't don't hogtie a really cool weapon behind a fucking raid that I'll be lucky if I can do once. There are people, especially the hundred, uh, the thousand K voices. Okay, the thousand voices. There are people who do all three characters all week for months, and they still haven't got it. I'll be lucky if I could do the raid one fucking time. How the hell am I supposed to get it? Well, you're not supposed to get it. Well, why the fuck not? I paid for the game, but I can't get the content. Bare minimum least I want from any Halo game is that I can do every single thing solo. Now, I understand in Destiny's case, there's raid gear, there's... Assuming they ever brought back trials, I don't do trials. I can I can deal with that. You got a trials gun, it's no big deal, but it's cool if you if you get it. Trials gear, it looks cool in some cases. Okay, I I can resign myself to the fact I'll never get that stuff. But when you've got a cool exotic that I cannot unlock because there's just nobody to play with, because all my friends list said fuck you to the game, because. <laughs> Don't you get me started how shitty Destiny 2 actually is? And 90% of that is not Activision's fault? Yeah, Activision's a greedy bunch of assholes. Oh, oh, I made $500 million, that's not enough money, or whatever the hell it was. Okay, that's just greedy bullshit. But Bungie obviously made some fucking stupid mistakes. They made some... I almost... I swear to God, I almost wonder if they didn't try to purposely sabotage... Destiny 2 and make it a pile of fucking shit. Make everybody so fucking pissed off that they didn't want to play it just so little son of bitches could get out of their contract. I wouldn't put that past them. The way they're popping champagne and shit like it was reported, I wouldn't be surprised they sabotaged the game. Either way, they've got a lot to make up for. They've ruined the brand. They've destroyed fan loyalty to, to Bungie. Bungie used to be one of the most respected game designers out there. There are people right now who are disgusted and want nothing to do with Bungie ever again. They've got a lot to make up for. They've got a lot of rebranding to do. And I'll be honest with you, I think Destiny 2 is... is they need to... They, they basically need to fill, fulfill their, you know, contractual obligation to the people who paid that... Fucking stupid DLC, that stupid season pass, piece of shit. 40 fucking dollars for that thing, and it has been nothing but trash. Four fucking forges so far. Absolute garbage. You need to fulfill that, and then put Destiny 2 to bed. And Some people are like, well, I don't know if they really need Destiny 3. No, they need Destiny 3. You know why? Because they need a fresh restart. They absolutely need a fresh restart. Because Destiny 2 is so toxic right now. It is so, so toxic. And you know what? There's parallels to Halo 5 as well. So this applies there too. And you know what I'd like to see with, with uh, Destiny 3? I'd like to see them take Destiny 1, take Destiny 2, call it Destiny Ultimate or Destiny something to that effect. Don't call it Destiny 3. Take all the content you got for Destiny 3, because we know they're working on it. Cram all that shit together and make one big fucking game. Because I'll be honest with you, there are parts of Destiny 1 I miss. There's some legitimately cool stuff in Destiny 1. Like the uh, the Sunless Cell Strike. There is some legitimately cool stuff in Destiny 1. Destiny 2 has, has like, it feels like it has no heart, no soul. There's no unique characters. There's no unique bosses in that game. Again, you, you contrast Destiny 2 with, like, the Sunless Cell, which was just a really fucking cool. You you drop into that pit, and it's complete black, and the guy just shows up, and you you got to kill him in the dark. That is just so cool. That is just really, really cool. And you got the brothers. Now, whether that's a, a good, necessarily a good battle, but it's still a unique thing. You got the freaking ogre down in the basement chained up, and if you beat the motherfucker, you, you your hunter can wear the uh, the chains around his, his, his gauntlets, around his uh, wrists. That is so cool! You got those little scumbag fucker uh, scion motherfuckers, and if you beat them, you get their cloak, and you got the yellow and the purple and the red and turquoise, whatever the fuck colors he had was. 
That pissed me off, man. I freaking played that so many fucking times. And finally, it was like I got all three of them right back to back. Like, bloop, 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 bloop. But I played, it was like multiple weekends. I would just do that strike over and over and over and over. And it was such a bullshit strike to begin with. Those little fuckers are so hard to kill. Oh, don't even get me started. But there was so much cool, unique shit in that game. And then they come to Destiny 2 and it's like generic. The strike bosses, oh, it's just a big, it's just a big scion. It's just a big shank or whatever the fuck it is. Oh, they even had the big shank in the original one. There's just, there was so much, I don't even know how to word it, but there was like, I don't know, I would almost equate it to like, Lord of the Rings, where it's like you got the, the, the walking, talking trees, and then you got, you know, the hobbits, and you got, you had all these unique characters, and all these unique little things going on in the world. You don't really get that in Destiny 2, it's just like, oh, here's a, here's a generic boss doing generic shit. Oh, well, he's just a bad guy. Kill him until he's dead. There, there was no sunless cell. There was no brother. You know, the two brothers. There was, there was nothing like that in the game. I don't know about the, the raids. I wasn't able to do half of them. But, you know, that stuff, whatever. But I want to see 99% of the game playable. Whatever the infinite is going to be. Halo Infinite, whatever it's going to be, I want 99% of it to be playable. You want to make a, a social game? Fine. But you've got to make it where I can play the fucking thing if nobody's on. If I want to go for a certain weapon, assuming that's part of it, I want to just be able to do that and not be like, well, there's nobody on, so, you know, it's so fucking hard that I can't actually do it by myself. I need four other people to play with or six other people to play with or whatever. No, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Please make the game where I can do 99% of the shit. Fine, you want to do some, some grandiose thing? Now, why can't they do raids that are matchmaking? I understand, well, you need to communicate. Here's the thing. I would rather take the point zero 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 one percent chance I can get the raid done with a matchmaking team than the, it ain't never going to happen, ever fuck you. Okay. You could do raids that are matchmaking where people could figure out what to do. You don't need to communicate. You could. You don't have to. But you could make that shit. You could do something where people could just play it and not have to worry about it. You could have the depth for the people who want it and the simplicity for those who don't. I don't particularly like raids because I don't like the anxiety. I don't like... No, I... If I'm playing with people that I like, and I had I had a raid group where there was like six of us, I was content, I was happy, they all started to go off their own way, and people stopped playing it, and now it's like, I don't want to play with random people. Now, if, if it's six random people in a matchmaking setting, I'm, I'm more okay with that than, oh, gee, I'm going on LFG, and there's a five-man clan who needs a sixth guy, and I can go in and be the odd man out. No, no. That's not cool. I don't like the way that feels. Because when I can't get past the jumping puzzle and they're sitting there waiting for me like, oh, this guy's a fucking idiot, I don't need that kind of destruction in my life. I don't need five other people laughing at me because I'm a fucking idiot. Now, if they're, you know, teehing and joking, it's like, oh, uh, he, can't, he can't make it. That's one thing. But when they're, like, literally legitimately ridiculing you because you're a fucking idiot, okay, I don't need that. That's one thing I hate about the fucking raid. Yeah, I could LFG all fucking day and find somebody to play with. But I don't want to play with a bunch of people that I don't know. I mean, again, unless it's like we're... Like, you, you do a strike. You, you matchmake you with two other people. You don't need to communicate with that shit. You just do it. You know? And there's some camaraderie in there. Like, I, I go down, somebody picks me up. They go down, I pick them up. You know, there's that kind of shit. Keep it simple, but keep it deep enough for people who want to explore the deep, you know? In other words, make it accessible, but then also make it deep. Same thing. If you get the base concept of Halo, then you can add your MLG bullshit. But don't just keep, oh, we're going to bring in the MLG people so we can help make the game. Because guess what? MLG people, you know what they don't like? They don't like grenade spam. We know what, you know what Halo's about? Every time you die, you drop fucking grenades. You pick up 
25 fucking grenades, you throw grenades all over the place. Because what's going to happen, it's going to end up like Destiny, where I stick somebody in the fucking head with a grenade, they don't die. But yet, uh, yeah, they get a grenade launcher, and all of a sudden it's, just, you know, five different kills. Instant kills. I could stick people five different times and nobody dies. Yeah, boo, 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 boo. And they shoot the fucking thing, five different people die. That's, that's stupid. Stupid. I don't know, man. I don't know. But seriously, if you're going to do an open world kind of Destiny style game, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for. I'm actually kind of hoping for that is in uh, Metroid as well, but I don't know. Especially if Nintendo wants people to pay for online, they need to do a Destiny style game, and that's all there's to be said. Now, I do kind of wish they'd bring Destiny 1 over to the Switch. I would, I would play that. I'd actually rather play Destiny 1 on Switch than I would play Destiny 2. Fuck Destiny 2. I'm getting tired of that game. I'm getting tired of it because it's like the more stuff that I can't get, the less interested I am to play the fucking thing. And, of course, they want people to buy stuff at Eververse. They want people to microtransaction. Well, you know what? Hey, if I can't if I can't get the 1K voice and I can't get the Malfeasance because there's nobody to play with, well, guess what? Those are two really big guns. And if, I, if I've if i resigned myself to the fact I can't get those two guns, well, then guess what? That other thing? Eh, I don't really care if I get it. That thing over there? Eh, don't really care if I don't get it. That next thing, you know, it's like, eh, you know what? I don't really care if I play today. Oh, don't really care if I play tomorrow. Oh, well, there you go. Now I'm done with the fucking game. I'm done with it. I don't want to play anymore. So the more you hold shit back, the less I'm inclined to play. The less I'm inclined to play, the less money you're going to get. It's that simple. And I'll be honest with you. If Bungie's going to continuously pop out the same bullshit, I right now I do not know if I'm giving them another dime for any DLC. At all. I don't know if I'm going to give them money. Even for... Even for uh, Destiny 3. I'm kind of disgusted with what they did. I really... The fucking Curse of Miley Cyrus pisses me off. Whatever the fuck it was called. Curse of Osiris, whatever. I call it Curse of Miley Cyrus, whatever it was. That DLC was bullshit. And then this this new season passed. Now, I understand, oh, it's, just, it's only... This is part one, and in March is part two, and then sometime in the, the fucking summer is part three, and then it's going to be a year later, and then blah, blah, blah. Look, I get that, but still, forty dollars for those four forges is bullshit. Even if the other content is like superior, first off, they fucked it up. Don't even get me started on how they fucked that up. You do not bring on a DLC, and then within half an hour, if that, put it on hold because you're not light level enough. You're not high enough level. Dude, I was the highest level you could possibly be, and I couldn't get the fucking first Ford done. Absolutely bullshit. You pay $40 for a DLC, and they make a big deal. Oh, DLC's dropping, new content's dropping, new content. Now, what do they do? They make it where you can't even play the first part of it. Oh, and they want them to do with the, the fourth forge. Oh, they put this stupid ass puzzle that nobody could fucking do. Even the fucking idiots on YouTube couldn't figure it out. It was so bad. In fact, there's even potential, potentially a glitch in the damn thing, where they couldn't even fix the. You couldn't even get through the damn thing. They actually had to take that out and let people just go to it. And it's like, really? I paid forty dollars in your hog tying content behind bullshit. Really? I mean, come on, man. You want to do that kind of shit, you do that shit separate. You do that shit solo. Don't hide content behind stupid bullshit that is unplayable. That sequence was unplayable. First off, I think, like they said, there was a possible glitch in the damn thing, so it was unplayable, literally. And it was so difficult that your average player who paid for the shit's not going to know how to do it. You had YouTubers who do this shit for a living who couldn't figure it out. They were in like 30, 40 hours, whatever the fuck it was. They couldn't figure it out. How the fuck am I supposed to figure it out? I'm not even a casual fan either. I mean, I'm not that insane. I'm not getting paid to sit there all day and stream that shit. You know? So give me a break. 
Anyways, you know what? This is the clip. This is my this is my second clip today. This is what I want to see for Halo. This is how we fix Halo. This is how we make Halo better. You make Halo better, people will come back. You fix it, you make it playable for the mass majority, they will play it. They will play it, they will give you money. Guess who's not giving you money? MLG. Guess who's not giving you money? e Sports. Guess who's not selling the game? e Sports. You know who is? Me. People like me, people like me are are selling the fucking game. People like me are promoting the fucking game in ways you can't even grasp. Okay, so they have this idea, oh, it's MLG and all these, you're going to have all these eyes on it. They're not, there's not a lot of eyes on it. Look at your own fucking webpage. Look at your own YouTube channel. All the MLG shit, you're lucky if you get 2K, 3K, 4K, maybe 5K total if it's 10 years from now, or 10 years back, I mean. But yet, you look at basic game uh, trailer, 27,000K. You know, it's like these astronomical numbers for, for base content of the game. But yet, put in NLG e nerd sport bullshit, you get like 1K. Nobody watches it. You're not bringing eyes to the product. You're actually taking eyes off the product because the average consumer doesn't want to sweat fest every 15 seconds. Every time you turn on a fucking game, you shouldn't be sitting there getting raped by stupid power weapons because that's all the game is. It's nothing but run for the power weapon and that's it. If you don't have the power weapon, fuck you, you're dead. I understand that's the point. You run to the power weapon and you're dead. But that can't be all the game is, and that's all Halo 5 turned out to be. If you didn't have a power weapon, you weren't playing. If you didn't have a DMR in 4, you weren't playing. That does not equal a fun game. On any level. So, I want to get back into Halo. I want to enjoy Halo again. I want to go and play through the entire thing. I want to do it properly. I want to get back into it. I'd like to, even like to stream it. Not that anybody's going to watch it, but that's okay. I don't care. I'm going to do it for myself. I don't give a fuck if anybody watches it. Fuck them. Fuck them. Do it for me, not you. That's half the problem. Every time I post something on YouTube, I go back and listen to it myself. I don't or watch it myself. I don't give a fuck if other people see it. I post it for me. Me and like a handful of like family members. That's it. People want to look at it and enjoy it. That's up to them. I don't give a shit. So even if nobody watches this, fuck them. I don't care. Don't bother me any. It's my clip. That's all I got to say in it. So fuck you. Let's make Halo better.